Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Have Gun, Will Travel. Original air date is November 8th, 1959, and the title is Assignment in Stone's Crossing. Let's get into it, and thanks for listening. You men are mistaken. I'm not an executioner. But you're still going to pay me that money because I came a long way to face this ridiculous situation. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. <laughs> Miss Wong, what are you giggling about? Oh, Mr. Paladin, you look so funny play that game. Your banana, throw him in there, let him fall, pick him up, throw him in there, let him fall. What did you say? This is not a game, Miss Wong. It's serious business. Oh, how so? Well, you see, I've had an urgent wire from a man named Jules Cleaver. He wants me to come to a place named Stone's Crossing. Never heard of it. No. Immediately. Oh, oh. Mr. Farley, why are you afraid to away your time playing games when you have urgent business? Miss Wong, it wasn't a game. The opera ball is day after tomorrow, and I'd planned on that. Yes, so I said to myself, I'll toss a coin. Heads, I'll take the job. Tails, I'll go to the ball. So? It came up heads. Yes. I take the job. And then I said, no, three out of five, heads, Head. four out of seven, heads, Head. five out of nine, heads. Head. So it looks like I better take the job. <laughs> Miss Wong. Oh, Mr. Potter, play that game some more. It's much fun to watch. best-selling records. Here's a familiar tune about America's best-selling filter cigarette, Winston. Because only Winston has filter blend up front. Choice, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. No wonder Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette should. Smoke Winston. I rode into a section of Nevada territory I'd never traveled before. A stark, desolate plain, with its line to the horizon broken only by sparse, dry sagebrush. The ground was lava-formed, hot and hard, and the ash-like dust that rose off it burned my eyes, closed my throat. I'd gone about five miles when my horse stumbled and fell and broke his leg. I was reminded then that when things seem bad, they can always get worse. There was nothing to do but shoulder my gear, walk back to the last water hole I'd seen, and hope that help would show up. Three days passed before I heard the sound I was waiting for. You better go a little easy on that water there. I'll hold it, friend. There's no need to reach for that gun. Doesn't look to me as if you could lift it, let alone aim it straight. You shouldn't sneak up on a man like that. You better let me take a look at that wound. It, it's no use, mister. All right, let me just take a look at it. Huh, rifle, huh? Lucky shot. This should have had attention. I was, 
It was mighty short of time. Posse had been trailing me for five days. Posse? Out of Marvin. He didn't take kindly to my shooting one of their citizens. What was the trouble? No trouble. Somebody paid me $500 for killing him. Ah, hired gun. You ever hear Myron Curtis? Yes. That's me. Hey, what are you doing sitting out here by this water hole? Besides poking into people's business. My horse broke his leg out there in the desert. Uh, have to shoot him? That's right. Well, now, this will work out just dandy. I'm going to make you a present of my, of my little mare there. I won't be needing her. Well, now, look, you... You watch your left front hoof. She's missing a shoe. Where are you headed? Stone's Crossing. Stone's Crossing. That was going to be my next stop. Fella sent for me. Let's see, uh, Hanson. Yeah, that's it. Mike Hanson. I wonder what he's got up his sleeve. I guess... I guess I'll never know now. Curtis... I buried Myron Curtis, then mounted his mare and started once more for Stone's Crossing on my appointment with Jules Cleaver. The going was slow. It was almost nightfall when I decided to make camp and go on to the town the next morning. I was gathering firewood when I heard the two horses. They came from the direction of the setting sun. And I wasn't able to see until they were right on me that both riders held rifles pointed in my direction. Don't make one move, mister. Hey, what's the idea? Crowley? Yeah? Keep your rifle on him now while I get his gun. And now, wait a minute. We don't want no talk from you, Curtis. Curtis? Just give me that gun. You know, I'm like this. I just don't give up. The others, they turn back, but not me. I knew I'd find you. Would it do any good for me to tell you that I am not Curtis? Not a lick. Did you ever see Curtis? Nope. We joined up when the posse organized back there in Marvin. All I had to know is that we was after a killer. Well, what makes you think that I'm that killer? Now, let me tell you something. Ed Wills don't bow to nobody, Indian or white, when it comes to tracking a man. Tell him, Crowley. That's right. Ain't nobody better than Ed. I followed your trail for too many miles out of Marvin not to recognize them tracks when we crossed them again back there. Your barefoot horse put the noose around your neck, Curtis. All right, Crowley, get down here and get his hands tied behind his back. We're going to take him back to Marvin, Ed? Yeah. But he'll be slung over that mare on his belly when he goes. We're going to hang him first. This is the cold season. What do medical authorities say about the common cold? Doctors tell us there's no known drug which will cure a cold. There are effective medications for treating complications accompanying or following a cold. If you've been taking sensible precautions and still have one cold after another, it's best to see your doctor. And here's another important health tip. When you have a cold and need a laxative, that's the time to rely on gentle X-lax. Pleasant-tasting chocolate at X-lax helps you toward your normal regularity gently overnight. X-lax gets along with any cold remedies you may be taking. And X-Lax works where nature wants, in the lower tract, not the stomach. Taken at bedtime, X-Lax won't disturb sleep. Gives you the closest thing to natural action the next morning. You're well on your way toward your normal regularity without upset or discomfort. So when you have a cold and need a laxative, take X-Lax, the laxative you can use with complete confidence. X-Lax helps you toward your normal regularity gently overnight. X-Lax. I sat through the night, my hands and feet bound, and the two rifles trained on me. Then just before sunup, we rode out in search of a tree to serve as gallows. Unfortunately, after a time, we were successful. I sat on the little mare under a spreading limb with the noose tied around my neck 
while the men made their preparations, and I hadn't the slightest idea how to save myself. I only knew I must stall as long as possible. Hey, Ed, um, this is awful close to Stone's Crossing. There's some people don't take to this, you know. Yeah, this is the first stand of trees we come to. I know, but there's some people's awful finicky about hanging. Yeah, it won't take long now. As soon as I get this rope over. Yeah, Hannah. Yeah, Hey, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you something. Fire away. Your time's getting short. Would it bother you to learn later that you would hang the wrong man? Yes, it would. And that's the truth. As far as I can see, you ain't the wrong man. Uh, tie off the end of the rope there, Crowley. Yeah. Uh, suppose I told you that Curtis is dead, that he gave me this horse. Well, now, just supposing you did. You hear that, Crowley? <laughs> <laughs> Looky, Curtis, the way I heard it, you're a pretty slick one. You ought to be able to do better than that. Yes, I guess I'll have to. Ken? I, I can hear a horse headed this way. Hmm. Well, looks like we're ready. Stand back, Crowley, while I give this mare a whack and get her going. Wait. Yeah? I trust you are a God-fearing man. I am that. Uh, then surely you will allow me a moment to silently make my peace with my maker. Ed, can't you see he's stolen? That, uh, that horse is moving in here fast. Sure is. Sorry, Curtis. Guess you'll have to die unrepented. Hey, give the horse a whack, Crowley. Wait a minute. Now, what is this? What's going on here? You see, uh, he was with a posse. He trailed this man from Marvin. Now, this here is Myron Curtis. He, he, he's wanted for a killing. Who? Myron Curtis. Hired gun. Now, these men are mistaken, mister. My name is Paladin. Wait a minute. Let's have a look at you. Well, of course. I didn't recognize you right off with that growth of beard. It's been a long time. You know this man? Yes. And his name is Paladin. Well, it can't be. We followed his trail from Marvin, I tell you. Look, all I've got to say to you two is get out of here fast before I take you into the sheriff. Well, I'm a little confused. Because, of course, you've never seen me before in your life. But I'm mighty grateful. Just glad I happened along when I did, Curtis. Um, Paladin. Oh, you can drop that now. It's all right. I know you're Curtis. Oh, you do? Sure, you have to be. I was wondering when you were going to show up. Yes? I'm Mike Hanson. I began to think maybe you hadn't received my message. But I can see that you ran into a little trouble getting here. I certainly did. Well, I have to turn off at the fork up here. I guess you want to get on into town. But maybe this is as good a time as any to bring up my proposition. Yeah, I suppose it is. When I heard about you, Curtis, I knew you were the man to do this job for me. That's why I sent for you. And the job? Well, the man like you... No need to beat about the bush. Curtis, Stone's Crossing is a pretty big town, and it's going to get bigger. But it's never going to be big enough to hold me and a man named Jules Cleaver. Jules Cleaver? I intend that Stone's Crossing is going to be my town. Cleaver's in my way. I'm going to lay it right on the line. I want you to get rid of him for me. I see. Uh... Will $3,000 handle it? 3000 Um, Hanson, could we... Could we do it this way? Could we let the matter rest right here for now? You'll hear from me. Sure, Curtis. I'll figure to hear from you later. Even if you've had embarrassing dandruff for years, you can get rid of it now in three minutes. That's all it takes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Yes, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes with Fitch, quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. What's more, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Just apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. 
At the same time, gentle fits can leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. I was grateful to Mike Hansen for saving my life, but I figured the explanations I owed him would have to wait. After all, Jules Cleaver was my client. I had traveled a long way to keep this assignment. I checked into the hotel at Stone's Crossing and called at Cleaver's home that afternoon. Mr. Cleaver? Yes? Your servant told me I'd find you here in your study. I'm Paladin, Mr. Cleaver. Paladin? Oh, where have you been? I've been expecting you for days. Well, I ran into a few delays. I got into town this morning, but there are a few things I'd take care of, like a bath, a shave, a decent meal. So, uh, what's on your mind, Mr. Cleaver? (laughs) Ah, that's what I like. You're a businessman. I'm a businessman. Let's not waste time. Let's get right to the point. Sit down, Paladin. All right. Well, Paladin, a businessman, or anyone for that matter, striving for success or certain attainments, finds, as a matter of course, obstacles along the way. If he intends to forge ahead, the obstacles must be removed, right? Yes, yes, I suppose so. Now, I'm a determined man. Oh? At the moment, there's an obstacle in my path. A man named Mike Hanson. Yes? And I'm going to lay it right on the line. I want you to get rid of him for me. How about, uh... Well, yeah, $3,000 for the job? 3000 Well, I've come a long way for this meeting, Mr. Cleaver. Yeah? It's been uncomfortable and miserable... I was nearly hanged in the bargain, but I'm afraid I've arrived here to find that there's... There's been a misunderstanding. What do you mean? I am not an executioner, Mr. Cleaver. Huh? Your gun is for hire, isn't it? Well, my... Look, suppose we let the deal remain right here, for the moment. I'll get in touch with you. Well, all right. I've been surprised to find Stone's Crossing the prosperous town that it was. Then, as I rode back to my hotel, I took note of the fact that all the places of business seemed to be owned and controlled by either M. Hansen or J.J. Cleaver. It appeared that I was involved with the two leading citizens. That afternoon, I gave the matter careful consideration. Then I sent messages to the two gentlemen. Oh, hello, Hansen. Come in. I, uh, got your message. Hey, you're right on time. You want a drink? Oh, no, thanks. I don't have much time. Well, did you decide to accept my offer, Curtis? Uh, Hanson, I am not Myron Curtis. He is dead. Dead? Yes. And my name is Paladin. Well, excuse me. Hello, Cleaver. Cleaver. Come in. Hanson. Paladin, now, what's, what's the meaning of this? What's going on here? Now, you'll find out, both of you. Sit down. I still now, want to... And be quiet. Gentlemen, I asked you to meet with me here in my hotel because I feel that we're involved in a situation that requires further discussion. Now, this morning, Mr. Hanson, you made me an offer of $3,000 to kill Mr. Cleaver. What? And you, Mr. Cleaver, early this afternoon, made me an offer of $3,000 to kill Mr. Hanson. Well, now, look here. Why? Now, you both can see what this means, can't you? This means that I would have $6,000 and you would both be dead. Uh, I'm getting out of here. Now you sit down. I'm going to give you a chance to reconsider. This is my offer. I'm going to lay it on the line, a phrase you gentlemen are so fond of. You will each pay me $3,000 and I will see that you both stay alive. No, you're what kind nothing of but a cheap is. gunslinger, Paladin. And you're going to pay me that money, too, because I came a long ways to face this ridiculous situation, and I brought you together here today so you could learn just how stupid you are. Now, I am not a killer, but you, Cleaver, didn't know that when you hired me for this job. You thought you'd bought yourself an execution. Well, then how come you... the man you, you hired, Hanson, never managed to make it this far. He died before you could make a deal with him. So, through circumstance, you gentlemen have another chance. Paladin. There's room in Stone's Crossing for both of you. May I suggest that you try to share the town in peace? Each of you, in attempting to destroy the other, 
just might find yourself destroyed. Now, gentlemen, shall we have a drink? Mr. Faraday, so nice to have you home again. Thank you, hey boy. Uh, Miss Wong have surprise for you. Oh, what's she been up to now? You wait, you see. You go in, Mr. Paladin. Well, now. Well, what's all this? <laughs> Very fancy, huh? Oh, Missy Wong, so sorry you can't go to Opera Ball. When she clean rooms in hotel, she save all party favors. Decorate for you. <laughs> well, I'm overwhelmed. Look at that. Paper hats, balloons, streamers. Oh, this is festive. I tell you what, hey, boy. Tonight, we'll order up some champagne. And you and Miss Wong and I will have our own ball. Oh, you saw. Very nice. Hey, Miss Paladin, you have a very angry red scar on neck. What is that? Um, it's a rope burn, hey, boy. A rope burn? Yes. Yeah. It's to remind me the next time I travel in Nevada Territory to be sure to bypass a place called Stone's Crossing. miserable cold and my sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? Dristan decongestant tablets not only help drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of colds infection, but circulating through the blood, Dristan reaches all congested areas. In one fast-acting, uncoated three-layer tablet, Dristan for the first time combines a decongestant to shrink all swollen membranes, relieve pressure and pain. An exclusive anti-allergent to help keep breathing passages dry and clear. Pain relievers to ease body aches, reduce fever. Vitamin C to help build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated. But the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. For real relief from cold's misery and sinus congestion, there is nothing, nothing like Dristan decongestant tablets. Gun Will Trouble. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, Joseph Cranston, Bartlett Robinson, and Vic Perrin. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. 
This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.